Hello! Today I'm going to show you a simple AC lamp dimmer circuit for a Raspberry Pi. So here we have a 40 watt, 230 volt light bulb. Here we have my dimmer circuit and there we have the Raspberry Pi. Now let's start the program and see what the dimmer does. So enter. And as you can see, the intensity of the light bulb is ramped up and down periodically. Okay, now let me explain to you what this circuit actually does. So this is our sinusoidal line voltage and the dimmer is now applying the so-called face cutting method. This is illustrated in red. So a certain fraction of each half wave is cut away. This dimmer circuit uses a triac to control the current flowing through the light bulb. The triac is initially non-conductive and at a certain point in time it's getting ignited and becomes conductive for the rest of this half wave and then returns to non-conductive state at the next zero crossing. So the task for our Raspberry Pi is to give this trigger, this ignition pulse to the triac at the right time. And here I'm going to show you the circuit diagram of my dimmer circuit. So the transformer here, which we have right here in real life, um, does not handle any power, it's just part of a phase detection circuit. So it provides galvanic isolation and here through a voltage divider I get a tiny sinusoidal voltage of a few volts peak to peak, which I'm feeding into a comparator IC, um, which converts it into a square wave signal that I'm feeding into one of the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi. Now the load itself, which we have up here, um, is controlled through a BT139 triac. And the ignition, the gating signal for this triac is also generated by the Raspberry Pi through this optocoupler triac to provide galvanic isolation. And here we go to an output GPIO pin. So that's what it does. Let's have a look at the program code. So um, it's quite simple, actually. Um, what I'm doing, I'm detecting rising or falling edges in this square wave TTL signal. And then after a certain delay, I'm igniting the triac. And this delay varies from 0.5 to 9 milliseconds. So this here is in microseconds. So that's 0.5 to 9 milliseconds. And Looking at the diagram again, so if the grid frequency is 50 Hz, then one full period lasts 20 milliseconds, and each half period, is, each half wave lasts 10 milliseconds. That's why it's reasonable to have a delay of 0 to 10 milliseconds. Okay, that's it.